So welcome to our 2010 Vernal Birch Sap Tapping Session. I've selected a birch tree uh, in this grove that's facing the sun, getting plenty of heat onto the trunk. Looking for a good healthy birch tree that's at least 8 inches round in diameter at breast height. I'm selecting uh, a spot that's about two foot up from the ground, uh, fairly smooth bark and I'm going to introduce a hole using a fairly old-fashioned auger like a giant corkscrew. Really critical, if you're tapping more than one birch tree do ensure that you're sterilizing this drill bit in between taps because we don't want to introduce any uh, disease into the birch trees. So that gets a good uh, quick sterilization. Selecting my spot, as I say, about two foot up from the ground or so. Auger goes in and I'm going to ensure that this tap is slightly angled up. So for better flow out of the apparatus we're going to put in. So slightly angled up. Start drilling into the bark. And as I'm drilling in, I'm just having a good look at the type of bark that's coming out. I'm taking away the outer, the silvery bark. Then I'm into um, <coughs> brown wood that's coming out of the, the drill or the auger. That tells me I'm into the, uh, the cambium layer. What I need to get down to is the sap layer. And I can tell that I'm into the sap layer because a white, a clean white wood starts to come out of the auger. And actually, the auger hole not particularly deep in this case, it will vary between trees because they've got different bark thicknesses. So starting to get the white wood out and starting to see the moisture actually coming out of the vessels of the sapwoods, so that's a good sign. I just Okay, so the hole's drilled. Uh, it's not too deep. It's not going in towards the heartwood where there aren't any sap carrying vessels. And it's not too shallow that the, uh, it's, the bung's going to go into the cambium layer. So we need the bung, the end of the bung that we're going to put in next, just to reach into the sap wood, the white wood. Uh, and I can start to see that uh, coming through the vessels of the white wood there. So I'm going to take a bit of uh, wine making equipment in this case, uh, rubber bung that goes in, good strong twist so there's a good connection there we're not going to lose any fluid and I'm going to start to um, get the sap flowing by giving it a bit of a suck to encourage it out ultimate soft drink Mm. Okay. Tube goes in. I've been careful in best of winemaking traditions, been careful just to sterilise all this equipment. Don't want any rogue uh, bacteria getting into it and spoiling the batch. That goes into your container. And I'm going to plug the neck of this demijohn with some cotton wool. That'll keep the insects out, which are uh, really attracted to this sugary sap. Uh, and also, it, uh, it lets a bit of air in and out so we don't get an airlock between uh, the pipe here and the container. Crucial with this as well is tie your demijohn or your container to the tree. You don't want to go away for uh, 24 hours, come back and find that it's fallen over. Here's our tap, uh, dripping really nicely. Uh, it's a drip every three or four seconds. So I expect over 24 hours I come back to this tap probably have about a litre or so of uh, vernal sap or birch sap. Uh, before you go make sure everything's secure, your bottle's not going to fall over and nothing's going to get into the neck of your container.
Jeg kigger 